welcome to Feed Dump, where it's summertime and the humidity index is pegged at about 150 grillion percent. So I'm sweaty. Joining me this week is somebody else who's sweaty. I'm damp. And a third sweaty person. I'm surprisingly okay. How is everybody's deodorant holding up? Let's hope at all. Two Oregon men are recovering after being hospitalized due to a rare beaver attack. Point of clarity, were they attacked by a beaver that attacks people rarely? Or were they attacked by a rare beaver? I'm really confused as to how this attack went down. Did it, like, bite them? Yeah. Or, or was it, you know, biting down a tree and having it? Yeah, how did this hospitalize two guys? You figure after the first guy got bit, the second guy would have taken off. No, no, no. This lends credence to the tree theory. One tree, two people. Ah, yes, the rare marksman beaver. Deadly with a tree. What happened was, these two hikers were hiking around Deschutes County in Oregon, and they walked out onto a beaver dam, and a beaver came out of the dam and was like, oh no, you fucking don't. Attacked one and knocked one guy into the river, and uh, knocked the other guy into the river, and he got trapped under a big pile of submerged logs. Uh, and then, so the guy who just merely fell into the river then ran and got help. But then search and rescue came back, and the guy who had been sort of trapped in the logs in the dam had managed to free himself and get away from the beaver. Uh, so they're both recovering in hospital. According to the sheriff, the lesson learned was don't mess with a beaver. Lest you be damned. <laughs> How is anyone supposed to follow that, Graham? F from, from a safe distance? I know. Let's go to commercial. Fun trick question. What should you do if you have a samurai sword, a sausage, and a bunch of beers? Come on down to the violence dome for katana versus sausage. That sounds like a very one-sided fight. But there will be beer, beer, beer. Is it rude to use a katana as like a skewer? Maybe some sort of sausage fondue? These all seem like good ideas when you've had a ton of beer, so... Hmm? No, you gotta think outside of the box. When is a katana not a katana? When it's a bottle opener. Like when people use a saber to open champagne, but just like... On tons of bottles of Bud Light. I was thinking more one guy's like, Hey guys, check this out, and lines them all up, and it's just like... Ha! Okay, this is the image we're building. It's a table full of bottled beer. The guy has a katana. And the sausage, he sort of has like a stogie almost. And he's like... And that's how he's serving this like redneck samurai party? Well, you guys, we're getting close to the end there. There was a guy wielding a katana, and there was a guy with a sausage in his mouth, but the beer was just inside the participants. Basically what happened is some guy said, Hey, I've got a sword. I'm going to try to knock this sausage out of your mouth. And he missed the sausage and cut off most of this guy's nose. Most of his nose? What kind of bullshit katana is this? Come on, Graham. It's a poor craftsman who blames his tools. Well, it's kind of hard to practice nose slicing. People get cranky. I don't even understand why they have a katana. Why would they have a katana? We have a katana. Ooh, do you have any sausage? Graham, that sounds really irresponsible. And have you even been trained on how to... Why is it coming closer to my face? Do you think William Tell was drunk when he tried to shoot the apple off his kid's head? He got an overture. What's this guy gonna get? Stitches. I just like to imagine William Tell picking up his bow and going, Hold thine ale. Watch this. A 25-year-old man from Glastonbury was in court this week on charges that he dropped trout and did a poo in the middle of a zebra crossing, splashing a five-year-old child in the process. Important note for our North American viewers. In the UK, a zebra crossing is the crosswalk. It's not the one line on either side. It's the black and white alternating lines, like a zebra. It's not actually a place where zebras cross because taking a poo there would be a very different thing. Thank you for clarifying, because I was confused. Like, were they at a zoo? What's going on here? Can you imagine being at a zoo and being like, God, I really have to go. I'm breaking into that enclosure and I'm pooping where those zebras is at. My mind actually filled in those blanks. It made a lot of sense to go where animals do. I can't believe that I'm asking this, but can you illuminate in any way 
the physical setup that took place that resulted in him splashing a five-year-old with his poop. Actually, can you not? It's already horrifying enough in my mind. Well, Serge, they always say that the imagination paints a picture far more vivid than real life can do. So to that end, here's what happened. He was crossing the street and he felt the overwhelming urge of diarrhea wash over him. And he finished crossing the street, but the people behind him in the crosswalk were a child and that kid's mother. And they were sort of right behind him. And as soon as he got to the other side of the crosswalk, he dropped trow and just like a torrent of liquid poo fired out of his ass. And the kid got some splashback. Oh, okay. Yeah, that adds up. It's a sad day. There are no winners in this story. Well, the guy got to poo. I mean, he wasn't explicitly victimized. I don't know about that. He has to live with the horrible crippling shame of what he did for the rest of his life. I submit that he does not in fact have shame, because someone with shame would have shit themselves and run away. A shameful person does not drop trow and release a Category 5 dooker on a zebra crossing. How does a parent handle this with their child? What conversation do you have? I mean, the birds and the bees is difficult enough, but how do you explain to them that everybody has to go and not everyone has a toilet? I mean, I think the conversation goes pretty much how you said it, it's just that for most parents, the conversation doesn't end with, and that's why you're covered in crap. Sage parenting advice, Graham. Really good parenting advice, actually. Jeez. I guess on that bombshell, we'll bring this episode to a close. But remember, there may be better sources of news, but they don't have this hat, which is a frog hat. I feel very froggish. If you're feeling froggish, then leap. No. Eminem quote. Really? Yeah. Uh, really? Yeah. Oh. If you're feeling froggish, then leap? Yeah. Master lyricist Eminem. Well, you don't want to go in the monkey enclosure. They'll chuck it back. All right. <clears throat> or did you want me to roll? I actually don't roll just yet. Okay. Cut.